Medical Disclaimer I am not a medical doctor, nor do I have any formal medical training. All content found in this video, for example, text, images, audio, figures, etc., is for informational purposes only. This video is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have heard, seen, or read about in this video. Today, I'm going to show you how to look through your CT scans to see if you have Maytherner physiology. Maytherner physiology refers to a specific pattern of compression between the artery, the vertebra, and the venous system. Here I have a picture of the vasculature close to the heart with your heart being up here. Bringing blood flow back to the heart is your IVC, which is short for inferior vena cava. That branches off into the left common iliac vein and the right common iliac vein. Bringing blood away from the heart is your aorta, which branches off into the left common iliac artery and the right common iliac artery. Maytherner physiology refers to the compression point that's noted right here. This is where the right common iliac artery compresses the left common iliac vein against the L5, L4 vertebra. So it squeezes it like a pancake. Now, depending upon how your vasculature is set up and if you have other predisposing conditions, there can be extra compressions in this area as noted on this image over here. What you'll usually find is that when you stent for this location here, and sometimes there's a secondary compression along that side, it'll fix any compressions over on the right side. Usually, but not always, some people do need additional stents. You'll also see this term nivel being used. Nivel is short for non-thrombotic iliac vein lesions. Maytherner physiology does not become Maytherner syndrome unless you have symptoms that are consistent with this compression. If you were to sample the population, roughly 25% of the population actually has this compression. In most people, it doesn't cause symptoms, but in some people it does, and those are the people that have Maytherner syndrome. Before we get to the CT scans, this view that we're looking at here is called a coronal view, and you'll see that that is similar to one of the CT views. And this view down here is a cross-sectional view or an axial view. So this axial view shows more clearly this compression that is happening between the artery and the vertebra of this left common iliac vein. You can see it gets flattened like a pancake. And this is just after the IBC splits. And you'll see that more clearly when I go through the CT images. In looking at the people that do have Maythorner syndrome, this is usually the most common pattern where you get these two compressions here. And then a few select people are unlucky enough to have all of these compressions. So I actually had this compression, this compression, and then there was another compression further down on the left side. So I basically had three out of the four compressions. And those were fixed with one stent, one long stent on the left side. And it's important to note too that the percent compression does not necessarily correlate with symptoms. In other words, somebody with a 75% compression could have more symptoms than somebody with a 90% compression. The percent compression is really only relevant for getting the insurance to cover the procedure. They like to see a compression greater than 50% and that compression is determined by 
a technique called intravascular ultrasound, also known as IBIS. So let's look at the CT images. Here is one of my CT scans. So this is before I was stented. This is how I actually diagnosed myself with Maytherner syndrome. So we're going to be scrolling from top to bottom. Here is your aorta and here is your IVC. And then this is obviously your spine, your vertebra. So as we go down, you can see the aorta is going to split first. This is your left common iliac artery and your right common iliac artery. And you can see the IVC is starting to slide under there a little bit. Watch this part. See how it starts to flatten like a pancake? Yeah, you don't want that. That's not normal. <laughs> what we would typically measure is the distance of closest approach between this right common iliac artery and the vertebra. And you can see here your IVC is going to be splitting off into the left and right common iliac veins. But this closest approach here, if we were to use the measuring tool and zoom in, one point eight millimeters that is basically almost a complete compression so if we take that off and continue moving through the images you can see that it stays flattened against that vertebra it's really really spindly and narrow and even when it does detach so this is the right common iliac vein and the left common iliac vein you can see that it's really compressed and then it starts to open back up. So that's what Maytherner syndrome looks like in the axial view, but it's not enough to just visualize it here. You also have to visualize it in the other two views. And I will show you how to do that. This is probably the easiest view to see. Coronal is the next hardest. So this is face down. So for this view, you're going to have to rock between the images. So what I'm looking at here, or what I'm keeping my eye on, this is your aorta branching off here. Your IVC is sitting right to the side. It's very hard to see, but you can see it branching off kind of behind. And what you're going to find as I rock between the images, you're going to see a normal size shape over here on the right side, but on the left side, it's going to appear bigger because it's being squished from the top down, flattening it like a pancake. So see how you can see that it's kind of bulbous here, whereas this side is not? See that? And as you go through, this white peeking through is my spine. So you just got to kind of rock back and forth to catch that compression in the coronal view. It's very tough to see but it's occurring right here. Now let's go to the sagittal view. This is the toughest view to find the compression in, I think. Okay. So this right here is your aorta. This is your spine. The vein is going to pass down along here, and I'll show you that in a second. So here what I'm doing, by pressing the down arrow, I'm advancing towards the left side of my body. And you can see this branch here. This is your left common iliac artery. Now if I go back up and rock it back towards the right side with the up arrow, this is the right common iliac artery. So now I'm going to rock back and forth slowly so you can sort of see 
where that branching point occurs, right there at the tip of my arrow. See that? So now if I follow that right common iliac artery down, you've got your L5 vertebra and your L4. Your vein is passing down in here. See how this artery is very close to these vertebra? See how close it's passing? <laughs> it's very, very close. So that vein, and you can see that kind of going down here, that's your IVC and your left common iliac vein. You can kind of see the compression in this view. So that's how you determine if you have Maytherner physiology. If you go online and you look at the symptoms, and your symptoms line up with Maytherner syndrome, then their symptoms plus the physiology that is seen in your CT scans means that you possibly have Maytherner syndrome. And in a different video, I'll show you how I presented all of this information when I gave it to my doctors. I obviously didn't have videos to show them, but I can show you where to take the screenshots and how to compile it to show to your doctor. So now you might be wondering, well, what does it look like after you've been stented? So let me show you what that looks like. So first we'll look at the axial view and the stent is going to become really clear. These areas of super hyper intensity is the beginning of my stent. So usually when they place the stent on the left side, they'll put it a little bit into the IVC. And that's what you can see here is that it is in the IVC before it splits off. And there you see it keeping that vein nice and open as the arteries pass over it. Now, what you also see in this CT scan, and I'm going to point this out now, my stent actually clotted despite the fact that I was on Seralto and aspirin. And you can actually see the clot inside of the stent on this CT scan. So right here everything's fine, but as you move, see how there's this like shadowing or different grayscale area? This is the clotting. See that? That's clot. So now what does this look like in the coronal view? This is where you can really see how long these stents can be. So I have a 150 millimeter stent. And you can see the top of it is right here. And the bottom of it extends all the way down here. So it's a very long stent to alleviate all of those compressions that I had on the left side, the two that I had on the left side. And it also helped on the right hand side. So now let's look at the sagittal view. Here you can see how closely the stent sits along your spine. So this is why when they stent you, a lot of people get really severe lower back pain after they've been stented and this is probably the reason why because it sits so close to the spine and obviously coming out of the spine which you can't really see on a CT scan but you can on an MRI is the nerve branches and bundles coming out so this might interfere with that a little bit um, but eventually that settles down and goes away. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Um, I also plan on making one for Nutcracker Syndrome, how to look for that in the CT scans, and also how to do some of the measurements 
um, that the papers refer to to determine if you meet the criteria for Nutcracker syndrome. And again, it's the same thing where a certain percentage of the population, I think it's 4% of the population has Nutcracker physiology, but only a smaller percentage of that 4% actually has symptoms consistent with Nutcracker syndrome. So again, doesn't become a syndrome until you have the symptoms. So I will also do a tutorial on that, and I've got a few others planned, so stay tuned. And if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments below, and if there's other videos that you're interested in me making, also leave those in the comments as well.